All right, buddy. So, what's your name and where are you from for the people that hasn't seen part one already? My name is Jeremy Garnier. They call me Uncle Dub. I'm from St. Louis, Missouri. Uncle Dub from St. Louis, Missouri, man. And, uh, yes, sir. I mean, damn, dude. We did our first part last week and what? Well, it's got yeah, like 100,000 damn views already, man. It's got 100 of them, James. I told you. Did I not tell yeah. you? Huh? Yeah, yeah. 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 <laughs> <laughs> Part two is going to get up there, too. Oh, God. Where are we going today, man? Huh? Okay. Now, I've been locked up in several notorious prisons in my life. Uh -huh. From I've been to Angola in Louisiana State. Angola? I've been to Bloody Beaumont in Texas. And I've been to the Walls in, Je in Jefferson City, Missouri. Um, but I was going to tell you a story. About and the feds, time. right? And the feds. And the feds. And, and the feds. The the Louisiana state was a state state sentence. Yeah, let's 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 talk about let's talk about uh, Angola, man. I heard that's a shit show out there somewhat. Man. Angola, they got the rodeo show, right? They did have the rodeo. And in fact, I painted at the rodeo for for Warden Bonnet. Wow. Now, there was three wardens at Angola when I was there. There was an administrative warden. There was a warden of the camps, and there was a warden of Big Strike. Big Strike was warden by uh, a warden by the name of Burl Kane. C-A-I-N, notorious warden of Angola from the time I got there from 1995 until the time I left in 96. The reason I went there, I only went there on a three-year sentence, was because I had fugitive warrants out of state. So they sent me at their supermax. They put oh, me at their max unit. Damn, so you, ain't now, even, you weren't even sentenced to prison or anything? No, I got a three-year sentence while I was there. Oh, okay, 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 okay. I got a three-year sentence in New Orleans. Oh, that's why they put you... After you've they been put, sent me to Angola okay. with a three-year sentence. Oh, okay. Now, okay. I, was at, I was at Camp H, Unit 2, Bed 42. I was on the camps. And, uh, uh, I don't know how you I'll remember you those numbers and stuff, man. I can't they, remember you know, none yeah, of that I stuff. I just remember certain shit. I remember my, I remember my inmate numbers. Oh, I mean, a lot of like, people do. I just don't see how y'all yeah. do it, you know? So, you get to, I get to Angola. This is 1995. This is right during the floods of New Orleans. New Orleans mm -hmm. was going through some serious floods. And we were getting rolled out to Angola from the flood from the floods. They were using Angola as a, as a holdover for for inmates. And we get off the bus and we're standing in the line. And he's got six goon squad dudes standing there with him, all with axe handles over their shoulders, telling us that your mama don't live here. You landed you landed in his world. This is Burl Kane's world. This is Angola State Penitentiary. Blah 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 oh, blah blah blah. And he had a long spiel about it. This is a true southern prison, a true yeah. southern prison, right? You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Angola Penitentiary. Angola Farm. Yeah. I'll tell you what, they fed so good on the farm that if you went hungry, it was for your own damn fault. And but <laughs> you, your own, you couldn't waste no food though. Yeah, yeah. You couldn't yeah. waste no food. You, you if you asked for it to be put on your tray, you had to eat that shit. You could be going to the uh, dump your dumping your tray with a bunch of food on your tray to put you to work on extra duty. Damn. That's good. Yeah. So Angola, so you actually could get good portions, huh? Oh, you could get hell of five portions at Angola. You, you know, Angola was a uh, self-subsistent uh, penitentiary. They had their own dairy. They had their own slaughterhouse. They, they slaughtered their own meat. They had their own eggs, their poultry, and all that was right there on the compound, on oh, the yeah. prison grounds. Yeah, we don't get none of you know that real meat no more. You know they, they, I mean? they grew their own food. They grew their own food. They grew their own vegetables and everything. Yeah. You know, yeah. It, was, it, was, it was very much, uh, very much uh, self-sufficient. Yeah. They could, they could <laughs> shut down from there. The only thing they needed from the outside world was the commissary. Yeah. They have us on Big Strike. They have us on Big Strike. They're holding us there because of the floods in New Orleans. And they have us on Big Strike in the in the, in the gymnasium on the floor. And there's like 300 of us sleeping on the floors on cots on, on the floor of the gymnasium. And they realize they can't house us all there. So they're going to move some of us over to this Camp H, which was uh, uh, from, come to find out, it used to be a tuberculosis dorm. And it used to be a, 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 a camp right next to the cesspool. Where, where the uh, uh, where the uh, waste where the camp's waste is at yeah uh, waste plant is at horrible so horrible camp of, let's put it like that yeah horrible camp <laughs> so a lot of so a lot of the inmates started bucking so a lot of the inmates started bucking saying they wasn't gonna handle this shit blah blah blah, blah. dude they commenced to start rioting on us and when the goon squad comes in to start putting order back together they start kicking motherfuckers asses so bad that they had us sitting on our cots they had us sitting on our cots. Now this is an this is an open dormitory situation, so you could look across the hall and see the dude sitting on his bunk. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. They had us sitting on our bunks and, and, and with Bibles. They handed out Bibles for us to read because it was about to get that bad. 
<laughs> they handed out Bibles for us to read. This dude, a CO, a correctional officer, I, I don't know his name, but I know Bonnet and Burl Kane were there. Kane told the CO, told, kept saying this dude, hey, quit looking at me. Hey, boy, quit looking at me. And there's a black dude that happened to have a glass eye, right? And he was across the, across the hall from me, like three bunks down. And I could look, I could look up from my Bible, and, and which I had upside down most of the time because I was so petrified. I, I could, I could look up from my Bible. <laughs> hey, I, I could look up from my Bible and look down and see the dude. And we called him cockeyed because his eye was cocked. And sometimes he couldn't cock it back into place oh, and to where it was God. facing the right direction. So usually he wore a patch over it. But during the strip searches, they stripped all of us out of our clothes and everything. He, they took his patch from him. So he didn't have the patch to cover his eye. Yeah. Right. Well, Ward Barnett, Ward, Ward on no, Burl Kane, seeing the dude with the, with the eye uh, looking at him all crazy and kept on telling him, quit looking at me, boy. Boy, quit looking at me. I'll get your eye right. <laughs> but the, the guy with the, with the bum eye, the guy with the fucked up eye, Kakai, Kakai doesn't know that he's talking to him. He doesn't know he's talking he to him. He just lo- thinks he's looking at him, but he ain't. Right. He ain't looking at him, but his eye's cocked and it is. Yeah. Right, he calls him see one of the COs, one of the goon squad dudes, a big old dude, six foot six, big ass boots on and shit. Calls him and says, "Hey, hey, hoss, call him hoss. hoss. Hey, hoss, hey, hoss. You see that one right there? Go get his mind right. Call him, go get his mind right." This dude comes down the walkway, comes down the walkway, passes me up, going full speed, hauls off and kicks the dude in his face. Damn. To which. The glass eye oh, pops no. out of his head. Oh my God. And rolls down the floor. Hey, I about shit my pants. I about shit my pants. He kicked this dude in his face. Kicked him right in his face and it knocked his knocked his fake That's, eye out of socket. I, I already knew and where it was going off. as soon as we got the cock eye and fake eye. I already knew where it was going, man. <laughs> he kicked his eye out of his face. I I, I am not even bullshit. How the hey, hell? I was so scared. I was so scared I found religion there. Hey, hey, I, 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 I was so scared that I wanted to call home. In fact, my daughter was born that June 4th, 1995, while I was in Angola, Louisiana State Penitentiary, was the day my daughter was born. But seriously, kicked, it, kicked, his, kicked his eye out of his head, kept us on lockdown. You know, first time I got stabbed. I got stabbed in prison. We, we, and this was over, over the fucking, how many years ago? 1989. Yeah, but about 31 years, about 31 years ago, uh, uh, I got stabbed by a dude named Stan because I wouldn't bring him drug and, drugs into the institution. Now, we were in the county jail together, and my mom used to bounce the ball. What I mean by bounce the ball is my mom used to move narcotics to the jail for me. Uh-huh. You know what I'm saying? So I could get my weed and, and, and whatever else I needed. Well, he knew that my mom would move stuff for me, so he was an older black dude. He thought he could press up on me. I, I got transferred to a, a the big boys camp to a place called Moberly in, in Missouri. And he thought he could uh, press up on me and, and press me into moving some, some weed for him because he knew my mom did it for me when I was in the county jail. Well, he had to realize the county jail and the state joint are two different places. Now you got to act a little bit differently. You know what I'm saying? You you ain't sitting there playing spades and and, and, and kicking it up for Zeus and Wanwebs in the county jail no more. We're now we're at the state joint. He tries to get me to move some dope for him, and I won't do it. I'm like, man, I ain't doing nothing, no shit. I ain't, I ain't moving nothing for you. I'm out on the handball courts, one even playing handball, and dude runs up from behind me, and I see him out of my peripheral vision, and I jump up out of the way, and he hits me in my leg on the inside of my groin. You know what I'm saying? I got a scar on my leg right now, about three inches long and about a half inch wide. Dang. From a, from a straight, straight. I don't know what he. I don't know what he hit me with. I still to this day don't know what he hit me with. But it left the jagged ass far, and, and it bled pretty decently. Now, he runs away after he does it and gets away. I, I don't get caught, and he doesn't get caught. I, a, a partner of mine gets a state coat. Now, I got caught later on. Later on that night, I ended up running out on the yard on him while he was playing basketball. He thought I got locked up. He thought I went and checked in. He thought after he stuck me that I went and checked in. But that didn't happen. I went to Rogan, got a $50 paper of cocaine, poured it in my leg, and sewed me up with a needle and thread. <laughs> Shit. Showed me up with a needle and thread and strapped knives to my hands and told me to go handle my business. And I went and I stabbed and I w- went and stabbed nine times. What the hell? I ended up. Hold ended on, up man. Going, Hold on. They dumped some powder into your cut and sewed it up? Yeah. Took a $50 paper of powder cocaine and dumped it in my cut to numb, my, numb it up and sewed me up. Damn. 
and strap sure some did. blades to your hand and say, go put in some work. Stretch some knives, stretch some knives on me and said, go put in work. That's and I sure crazy, did. Man. I went and I How did he strap the knives on you, man? Do you... With, with ace bandages, you know, the, like wraps? Yeah. With yeah. ace wraps. Oh, my God. With some God. ace wraps. Ace wraps. I had, I had a state coat on, a brown state coat on. Ace wraps wrapped me up, caught him in the blind spot of the single, uh, it's a, uh, uh, basketball court, but it wasn't a full court. It was a half court basketball court. They called it out in the blind spot at Moberly going out to the backyard. I cleared the, cleared the court. I came around running out, out on the court after him. He had his back to me. Everybody scattered off the court except him. And he turned to look at me. As soon as he turned to catch my eye, I was on him. Bang, bang, bang. And hit him like eight or nine times. And no, nothing crucial. No, nothing, nothing critical. Yeah. Some shoulder shots, a couple yeah. side shots. Yeah. And now let you me know. ask you that. And see now a lot of people I've interviewed have done stabbings and stuff like that, including myself, uh not in prison, but you know, just regardless. Uh yeah. do you hold back? Let's say you want to do something like that. You were holding back. You you knew if you yeah, wanted to go I, I, I hope I yeah, I hold back because I feel if I have to go full force, you probably kill him. Yeah, so you know yeah, what you're doing. You were controlled and, and yeah, controlled it was, movements. Yeah, it, okay. it was controlled. I spent 16 months in an SRU in a in a uh, in a state hospital called Biggs, uh, which is Fulton, which is in Fulton, Missouri. And it's a, it's a state hospital for uh, criminally insane. Yeah. Because I played crazy afterwards. Oh, yeah. I spent I spent a year in the hole go uh, uh, behind the behind the stabbing. I spent a year in solitary confinement behind the stabbing, put, uh, putting all kinds of flood in the cell all the time. You know, a, a, acting a stupid fool. You know how kids yeah. do. Yeah. Uh, acting a fool, flooding the cell, getting getting tased, getting the goon squad to come in and kick my ass a couple times. You know, uh, went through all that, playing crazy, playing the role. And they ended up putting me in a, in a thing called the SRU program, Social Readjustment Unit, which is for behavioral disorders for, like, criminally insane. And I was there with some real uh, uh, – uh, Jack Nicholson, fucking one two of the cuckoo's nest ass crazy folks. Yeah, I mean serious. Juicy food. <laughs> uh, so that was, it was crazy, man. They keep you sedated in there, or what? They try to keep you sedated, but my mom told me about the medications, and she said if you take the medication all the time, you'll have neurological effects. It'll slow you down. You'll slow your motor functioning down. You'll slur or, or whatnot. So I tried not to eat them as much as often as possible. But a lot of times they did mouth check. Now there was one nurse there that was a, a she was my nurse she was assigned my she's my day nurse and anytime that I wanted to talk I, to talk to my day nurse she'd come out and sit underneath the pavilion and talk with me. Well, I, I used to get fed up with talking with dudes all the time out on the yard, so I call my day nurse out to talk to her a couple <laughs> few times a week. You yeah, know, what I'm saying yeah, just to have yeah. a female to talk to and shit. And she knew that I wasn't as crazy as they had me, as they had me planned out. To <laughs> they got a treatment plan. They they got a treatment plan for each inmate. Each inmate had their own had their own. Uh, uh, plan their own protocol, yeah. and she said that they had my, that my plan had me way too crazy than I actually was, and she <laughs> wanted me a, she wanted me to confide in her and, and explain to her how come I was playing crazy when she knew that I really wasn't. Yeah, because I know you're not as crazy as, as they got you. She goes, I look at your list of medications, and there's no way in the world you should be on this much this type of medication right now. Yeah. She goes, I talk to you a few times a week. Your doctor only talks to you once a month or something like that, and I was like, you know, don't bust me out because I was afraid that if, if they wouldn't have. If, they, if the state wouldn't have put me in the crazy house, they would have put me in a more charges. They would have charged me. With, with, they would enhance my charges and, yeah. and give me more time. They might. But they did. Yeah. Well, I mean, they could have gave me a city case. They got me in a free world case. Yeah. They could have gave me a free world case off of an assault case, but they didn't because yeah. I played crazy. Yeah. You know. Yeah, that's crazy as hell, man. Uh, and that was in Missouri. Yeah, it was in Missouri, but it wasn't the it wasn't the very first serious uh, violence that I caught. The very first serious violence I caught, I got my jaw broken. I got my jaw broken, my Jeez. nose broken, my collarbone broken. I, I got all that. I got fucked up in in the uh, prison called Boonville. For that was all done in one fight. Uh, all done at one time. All Damn. done at one time by, by like by like four or five different dudes. Oh shit! They were disrapping yeah, you, pack. man. Yeah, I got I got rat pack. Well, I got rat pack for sticking up for some other kids. Uh, oh uh, man, let's hear this shit. Well, here I come playing Captain Save a Hole. <laughs> here we go. Here I come playing Captain Save the Hole, and, and, and mind you, and mind you, none of this, this was this is a, a prison for youngsters, young young dudes. You know what I'm saying? This is the young dude spot, but they had sent some old. Uh, uh, this is the young dude spot, and here I come, and I'm back there by the TV room, and there's two white dudes sitting there watching TV, 
and about three or four black dudes come in and they're all loud and boisterous talking shit, blah, 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 blah. And they walk up, y'all ain't watching this and they start turning the channel. Well, they were watching it. You know what I'm saying? And I spoke, I said, yeah, they was watching that. Turn that shit back. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So it's, 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 it's fuck you, white boy. I was like, man, no, fuck you. You know what I'm saying? We go back, we go to E-Dorm. Now, E-Dorm was the dorm in the back where everybody went and scrapped at. You know what I'm saying? Because the CO was all the way up front. He doesn't know what's going on back in E-Dorm so you can get it off. Right. So we go back to E-Dorm and we're, we, we, we face, we, we face off and shit and we're throwing hands and I start getting the better of the cat. And then all of a sudden, bam, I get blindsided. I get sucker punched from, from somebody else from left field. Next thing I know, I'm motherfuckers start kicking at me and shit. Well, I find myself underneath the bunk in between two bunks. And after it's all said and done, I got, I got, I got a fractured jaw. I got a broken nose, which is obvious. My nose has been broken a couple of times. Uh, uh, I, I got a, a, and a cracked collarbone and a couple bones in my hand. My arm got broken because of covering up and getting the boots to the head. Then I'm sitting there kicking me, kick, trying to kick me, kick me in my head. But I was underneath the bunk. You know, good thing that I, and when I wasn't grabbing onto the bunk, they were getting let loose on me. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. That was the best position I could find myself in. I couldn't, I couldn't stand up and go toe to toe with all four or five of them. Yeah. You know, but uh, I catch an assault. After they kicked my ass, I spent a good month in the infirmary, you know, and, and then I spent another six months in, in SEG in, in the hole. And while I'm in SEG, I get busted for some cigarette violations and shit and catch another 10 or 30 days or whatnot. But by the time I get out of the hole, they let me out of the hole there on the compound that I had my ass kicked on. They didn't roll me. And they let me out of the hole. And I see one of the dudes that jumped me. I see one of him and he's working out on the weight pile. And I go in and I turn my ID in. So you can turn your ID in to get 10 and five pound plates. If you wanted to get five pound and 10 pound plates to put on your, on the weights outside on the rec yard, you had to turn your ID in to get them. Did you have any, like any fucking wires in your mouth or anything? My, no, my jaw was healed up by them. It oh, had okay. been a longer than six months. Oh, okay. It was, okay. It, it, it was like seven months later. Oh, okay. It was like okay. seven months later. Oh, all right. I did, I did all my, I did all my insure and, and the rubber bands. I had my shit rubber bands. Yeah. I never knew that how that shit worked, man. That It's huh? probably horrible, isn't it? Going through that. Oh man, it was. It, it, it was. I could barely for, for a while there. I could barely fucking even talk to you. Yeah. Because they had my shirt, our shirt, our shirt. Yeah. Yeah. You know I because I couldn't open my mouth up enough to put food in my mouth to chew. I remember snapping rubber bands to try to stuff food in there. Damn. Being so hungry and shit. That's crazy. But, uh, oh, so I get a five pound weight and I catch a dude working out and he's on the bench press and he's got a dude spotting him. He's doing he's doing benches and uh. uh He's got a dude spotting him. I push his spotter out of the way, and I come down on his face with a five-pound weight. Bam! And split his shit open. Damn! Hey, they split his shit open, and they had a fractal facial blowout. I mean, uh, I don't know what, what what it was called, but it landed me in the in the hole for another fucking six months. Jesus. And it was I got rolled immobily. I spent fucking, I spent one year, this is on after for doing nine years though. You know what I'm saying? I did nine years the first time. Yeah. Uh, I, I spent one year, two year, three year. I spent four years in the hole out of nine years. Out of nine years, I spent four of those years in the hole. That's but from catching t tattoo tickets, man. Every time I catch a tattoo violation, it's ten more days in the hole. You you catch six of those in in six months. That's an accumulation of violations. You're doing ninety days ad seg. You've been ad seg for tattooing. You know what I'm saying? I've been ad seg for tattooing, having to do ninety day bits in the hole. Just because, and then when people, when you come out to the streets wanting to tattoo, and people are like, you got to pay your dues, you said, I was like, yeah, if you ever fucking had to do time in the hole because of you <laughs> doing your passion, doing what you love doing. Yeah, you dude, I went saying? to the hole so many times for tattooing, it's unreal. That's most, that was just about every time. I went to the hole a couple of times for fighting, but mostly every time was for tattooing. tattooing. Yeah. Me too. Me uh, too. And the more you get, the worse you it gets. You know what I mean? Uh, the first one might be a little warning, maybe might go a hole. The second one's definitely hole, at least over here. And yeah. then it's just more and more time in the hole as it gets uh, longer. Yeah, you're but, doing, hey, you're doing, you're doing, you're doing hey, ten at least ten in the hole in Missouri on your first one for tattooing. Yeah, and yeah. and after that it's thirty, sixty, ninety. Yeah. You know they'll, they'll they'll pad it up if you get if you get a few if you get three tattoo if you get three violations and. And also, if you, I'm known for tattooing. You know what I'm saying? When you're when you're historically known for tattooing, it's like whenever the whenever the prison bus rolls up and you get off of it, and everybody starts seeing who it is that just got off the bus. Oh shit! It's hip hop. Uh oh, I'm first. I'm first. I'm second. Whatever. 
yeah. uh, they start they they are they already know that you're the tattoo artist, and and if they know that you're in, see, in the straight, it's in the feds, it's different. In yeah. the feds, they'll let you tattoo. If you go up to them and say, "Hey, boss, I'm trying to make some money so I can send some presents home this month, this year for Christmas," uh, I'm gonna sling a little bit of ink. I got a point, man, to keep watch out for the tenants. Is it cool? And he's like, "Yeah, it's cool." He'll give you they'll give you permission if you ask for permission. But you know what I'm saying? Sometimes it says it ain't cool, man. They're busy running around today. I don't want to keep my I don't want to have to worry about it. Yeah. And they'll say, no, it ain't cool. You know what I'm saying? But if you and then you just go and do it anyway. But uh, uh <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Hey, hey, speaking of tattooing, I mean, that's what you're doing right now. You're out in Pennsylvania right now, right? I mean, I'm in Pennsylvania right now tattooing. Yeah, damn right. How'd that happen? I mean, uh, you're from Seattle, correct? I mean, uh, no, St. I'm from Louis. St. Louis area. Yeah, St. Louis. I'm from St. Louis area. I flew yeah, I here. Up a I, flew, bit. I flew here to Harrisburg, Pennsylvania, uh, Wednesday. Uh -huh. uh, well, the gentleman he uh, he wired me a deposit up front and uh, said if I get here, you know, uh, I'm, I'll be making more money. So I got here, and I'm tattooing for a week. I'm here for a week, and he's in the other room sleeping right now. I just tatted his ass to sleep. <laughs> Hey, I, I still got my tattoo stuff sitting around me. I still got. How did you meet this guy? Around. Did you meet him on Facebook, Facebook. YouTube? And Facebook. Okay. How many times have you done something like this? Uh, I've I've gone to Wakefield, Nebraska, a couple times. I've gone to Montgomery, Alabama. I went to uh, Louisiana recently. Uh, I recently went to Louisiana. I've been I've been to Nashville, Tennessee, a couple times. You know, uh, uh, I've had people come to me from as far away as Ogden, Utah. Dude, I got to get you out here, yeah. man. I'm going to get you to Virginia yeah, Beach soon, dude. We're going to make you're, a video. We're going to do some Virginia tattoos. I'm, I'm, close to, I'm, close to, you know, I'm close to Virginia Beach right now. I know. Uh, you're very close. I'd say uh, Harrisonburg's probably shit. That's probably only like about four, not even four hours away. Five hours, I think. Maybe. I got a partner that's in Virginia Beach right now that just drove through to Virginia Beach. Yeah, yeah. A lot of UFOs out here. Hey, man, I've seen that. i seen that. <laughs> now, do, do, you think that's a, do you think that's a, a, a naval thing? What? The naval? You said naval, yeah. dude. Honestly, yeah, I don't naval. know. I don't know. I have so many thoughts and theories on all this stuff, man. It's it's wild, but yeah, man. So you're in Pennsylvania doing tattoos, uh, for a week. I mean, was it a big piece? I'm doing sleeves. Jeez, how much? How much you uh charging for that? If you don't mind me asking. Thirty five hundred dollars. It's not bad, man. Thirty five hundred dollars, and he's got big arms, though. Yeah, he's got big arms. I'm talking about his arms. If 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 I were to like fillet his arm open and spread the skin out, yeah, it'd be my back. Yeah, it'd yeah. be my back. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. But I'm I'm skinny, dude. You know, but it, it, he's got he's he's got big arms. But um, yeah, thirty five and probably a tip. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, better be a damn tip. <laughs> and, and and plus, I'm gonna be tattooing a couple other people while I'm here. Well, damn, dude. I mean, uh, what do you think? You know, just to jump out the prison scene, maybe we'll talk about prison a little more because you've been there and got plenty of stories, I'm sure. But what do you think about this uh, 100,000 views on your video, man? You got a great turnout. You got a lot of uh, people that enjoyed the story saying to bring you back on. Have you thought about making a YouTube channel, man? You know, I I, I have, but uh -huh. I don't have the software and, and our, yeah. the, the wherewithal to really put it together on a daily basis and, and be as structured as you have to be to, for content creation. I mean, I create content off the cuff, but you know what I'm saying? To go looking for content to, to, to put on the show on a regular, man, it's a lot of work. And, it is. And I, it is. It, it is. You know what I'm saying? I applaud you for, for, for that in, in the utmost. Uh, if, it's amazing somebody, that you, you already notice all of this stuff. Well, you already got pretty much good following on Facebook, so I can only imagine you already know the drill. A bit, I, you know? I mean, I, I, would, I would love to broaden the platform. I would yeah. love to broaden the platform yeah. on, on, on any level, on any platform. I would love to broaden but like like I said, getting a a YouTube channel up off the ground, uh, I don't even have a thousand followers subscribers to YouTube yet, and my thing's going live. You know what I'm saying? I don't uh, uh, doing the editing and, and stuff yeah, that, that yeah. you do to put the shows together. I, I don't have the wherewithal to do that. You, yeah, you know, I, some I, I, it I, can I, be I, overwhelming I to some people, man. You know, and some people just ain't got the time, and they just got their hands like you. I mean, you're doing tattoos, you know, thirty five hundred. You, know, you can't I, be dead. I, I tell tell people that. I'm a success story. You know why I'm a success story? The reason I'm a success story is because I never, I never completed probation or parole successfully. I all I 12, 12 from prison and was released because they had to let me go. Not because I worked my way out of it by being good. You, you, you know what I'm saying? People say, how do you make it on the streets? I said, well, I didn't make it on the streets. I 12, 12 in prison. 
You know what I'm saying? I, I made, I violated every time I got out of, of prison, I violated parole with dirty urine, smoking weed. I couldn't mm -hmm. stop smoking weed. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So I violate, I violate. But I, and my advice to anybody that's doing any time or that's doing any time that's on probation or anything like that is that if you are doing time and you want to succeed when you come home, 12 12 your bitch. Don't tell them that, man. They ain't. <laughs> Don't do day for day, ladies and gentlemen. Try to get out and do what's right. You know what I mean? <laughs> hold on for a second. Oh, hold, on for, hold on for a second. Yeah, I don't know no, about the no, whole 12-12 no, 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 bid, man. Now, now, look here. Look here. If you don't, if you don't have kids that you're going home to that, that need you at home, and, and all you, if, you're, if you're under 30 years old, if you're under 30, and you don't have kids, and you have under a ten-year sentence, man, do that bit, man. Now that I could probably uh, definitely uh, ride oh. with you on. That's better, uh, better uh, 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 guidelines, I guess you could say. <laughs> Hold on for a second, man. I got this. I got this. Hello. Hello. How you doing, Josh? This is Jeremy calling. This year, I, I'm busy right now, Josh. I, I'm on, I'm on an, another conference call with this. With, with with Josh. Okay, thanks. What the hell is Josh another calling Josh. when when you're talking to Josh, man? What the hell? Yeah, What's going Josh. on here? That, that that was my therapist. Oh, doc. No wonder why you talk so well with me. <laughs> that was my therapist. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> no, 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 this shit's hilarious, no. man. Oh my Look. god. Uh, just because I've done a lot of time in prison doesn't mean that I'm a stickler for, for that. I'm a firm believer that if you're out there fucking up and you're doing crimes that if you know what sentence it is and what sentence carries, be prepared to carry that sentence if you have to and take your weight and do your, do your time and don't for try sure. to drag nobody down with you. Don't try to snitch on nobody, drag nobody down with you. If you're out there doing dirt and you know, it carries sense, don't get all bitchy and moany when they try to slap it to you because you knew you had that coming. You know, that's why I'm not out there fucking up. That's why I'm not out there robbing and stealing. That's why I'm flying across the country to tattoo is because I can hit plenty of licks in my city. I could be back to criming. I could be back back. To, I could be selling dope. So that's the easy thing. You know, counting is easy to do, you know. But I also know that if I was to do that, I would risk going back to prison. And that's not what I want to risk doing. I don't, I don't want to risk going back to prison. And to all the convicts that are coming home, just keep that in mind. Man, if you don't want to risk going back to prison, then don't put yourself in situations that are that are around the people that could bring you there, that can drag you there. You know what I'm saying? Because people can drag you down and will drag you down. It's like crabs in a bucket. They don't want to see you excel. You got to excel by yourself. It's a very lonely world when you're trying to excel. You know what I'm saying? I bet you got your old lady and your kids. You know what I'm saying? And maybe one or two homies or something like that, that period. You're absolutely right, that, man. You're absolutely that, right. It, 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 uh, other than that, it's solitary confinement. Solitary yeah. fucking confinement. Because you know what? If it wasn't, I'd probably be back in prison right now, man. You know what I mean? That's how I want it. You know, I know what kind of bullshit comes with more more friends. You know what I mean? And and But yeah, you're absolutely right, man. I got my wife, my family, and a couple friends that I could, you know, lean on. That's I know. it. You know? And even though, even though, even though in social media, you have thousands and thousands of followers people don't realize it's just because i got thousands of followers i got fifteen thousand something on social media on facebook it doesn't mean translate into last year on my birthday i was the only one there the year yeah. before that on my birthday i was the only one there yeah you know what i'm saying so having these thousands of followers on social media doesn't equate to having a lot of friends in real life i, I don't want i don't want people to think that i hey, i glamorize the fact of doing a lot of prison time or anything like that but here's something to take into consideration I did all that time in prison. And when I was leaving those prisons and I was coming home, people say, welcome home, welcome home, welcome home, welcome home. In the back of my mind somewhere, I'm thinking to myself, what makes you think I didn't leave home? Because there's guys that I, I know homo, but there's guys I'm never gonna see again. Uh, and we're not, we can't fucking uh, uh, be friends on Facebook and this, that and whatnot, because they're in super lockdown prisons that, that they don't see the light of day like that. They don't have, telephones coming in from the CEOs or on regulars like that. These are, you know, super max situations. I got dudes out of Florence, Colorado that I'll never talk to again, but they were homies. They were, they were dudes that I trusted 
that would go to war. They'd strap up with a knife on them and go out on the yard and take care of business if they had to behind behind me. You, you know, and and they were we rode together. We were you know, you know, friends. You know, and then I'll never see him again. Never talk to him again. Never see him again. And I had to leave him behind. When you say goodbye, when you say goodbye and welcome home, and the welcome that I did that I got from home wasn't that welcome. My mom, my dad. I had to create all new friends because the friends I had before I got locked up, I didn't want those friends. They didn't keep in touch. I had animosity towards them. Animosity towards all my old friends. My fuck my old friends. They didn't keep yeah. in touch with me. Didn't write you know, like, you know letter, how it is. nothing. Yeah. You didn't get no letters. You know yeah. what I'm saying? You know, you know, you don't you don't get no letters from the homies and shit like that. I didn't even get no my mom didn't even get no hey, so and so asked how you were doing. You know what I'm saying? Every once in a while, so and so will ask how I'm doing. But that's not that's not no money on my books. That's not no fucking visits. Or just being there, bro. You know, just yeah, a letter there, period bro. from anyone in there means a lot. And you know what? I only gotten one from my friend, from all of my friends in my whole life. I've only gotten one letter from one guy. And even though it was one letter, I'll never forget that dude as long as I live, man. You know what I mean? Uh, but this is, you make a very valid point, man, that I tell people all the time on my channel. They wonder why people keep doing things bad and going back. Well, you know what? A lot of people. It's they much better. You know. It's much better in prison than going back to the fucking projects or wherever, and they have nothing. They have mental abuse. Their families whacked out. What the hell? People in prison, that is home to them. It's much better people, of a home, you know. There's people in, in, in prison. I was a big fish, in, 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 a, in a, not a big big fish. You know what I'm saying? I was I was one of the best tattoo artists in the prison system, yeah. in, in where I was at. So. That meant that I had a lot of car to You know what I'm saying? I, I, I could go to the store man anytime I wanted to. My locker stayed full. I played at the big poker table with the big boys. You know what I'm saying? The poker table were only the drug dealers and and, and then the uh, uh, the store men played at. You know what I mean? Uh, it allowed me... Uh, uh, I, I tattooed all the shot callers. You know? And I was one of the only white dudes that was allowed to tattoo on black dudes without anybody saying nothing about it. Because I was good enough. And, and uh, see, uh, uh, and this was in the feds. Yeah. This was in the feds. I tested on who I wanted to, when I wanted to. And I was independent. But usually, like, if you were in a, a, a white in a, in a car, they wouldn't let you take, they weren't allowed to. Yeah. But I was good enough that they made an exception out of it. They're like, you know, <laughs> hip hop's good enough. Because yeah. they wanted my tattoo work, regardless yeah. of who I tattooed on. They knew I didn't reuse needles. They knew that I made my own needles. I, I, I used to, uh, uh, take guitar strings and take the, uh, not the guitar string, but uh, lighter spring. That's why you I use lighter springs. A lot of people use guitar string. I use lighter springs. They're a lot finer. You and you get, yeah, they're a lot with a little candle. I had a little mentor candle. I was straightening yeah. out with two nail yeah. clippers. Right. But they would get the way more thing. finer work than guitar string, if you're to ask me. I do the same thing. I do the same thing with the lighter spring and it'll pop and it's ready to go. Yeah. You didn't have to put much sandpaper on it. No. If you pulled it nice and slow to an extent, yeah. you had a rhythm. You can make that point nice and tight without having to sand it too much. Wow. Uh, I do the same thing. But uh, I do the same thing. Let me ask you this. Yeah. Let me ask you this, man. And we'll wrap it up right here. Well, first, we'll, we'll also get into where they can find you. But let me ask you one last question. Uh, do you feel like home is on the streets now? Uh, <clears throat> being on the road right now at somebody else's house, sitting in somebody else's dining room, um, I can say, yeah, home is on the streets now. Uh, but when I am home, uh, home is where the heart is. You can get that by Uncle Dub. It's out right now on Spotify, uh, 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 Pandora, uh, anywhere you hear music right here on YouTube. Look it up. Uncle Dub. Home is where the heart is. Uh, it's a new song released by myself. That's where home is. Home is where the heart is. And uh, I got love for the joint, but my heart isn't in the joint. My heart's at the home. At home. And uh, but what I've done is I'm so institutionalized is that I've confided myself in my own self-confined prison of my cell, my room. My room at my home has become my cell. Has become my. I don't travel far from it. You know what I'm saying? All right. Same here, my friend. I, same I, I here. I travel far from myself. Yeah, I, I mean, I stay in my I stay in my cell a lot. A lot of my stuff goes on for myself, and it, it keeps me out of trouble. And, but it's that's part of institutionalization. You know, let me tell you, the biggest uh, getting used to after been after doing so many years in prison. Can you imagine doing 
living over 11 years of your life eating off of nothing but plastic spoons. Oh, that's so strange. I know, man. Silverware. And then eating metal. It's so damn weird. Hey, putting your mouth on metal after after so many years on plastic is so weird. It, it, you can taste the metal alloy in your mouth from a spoon. Yeah. Big time. Yeah. Uh, wow, you can taste that metal. You can metal. taste the like metal. Weird. It's unbelievable, isn't it? You know what really got me, man? And I ain't do no stretch like you, but what really got me was taking my shoes and socks off and walking on carpet. Oh, yeah. <laughs> or just walking on good, <laughs> good, good old grass, you know? Uh, opening and you know the... what got me? What? Uh... Taking a bath. Oh, yeah. A real bath. Yeah, a real... Taking a... All of those first moments, water. man, you know? All those first moments, I think every person who's been locked up and been released can really, really remember those. You know what I mean? Tell the people where they can find you, man. You got some stuff. You don't have a YouTube channel, but pe you know, millions of people got you Facebook. Can, if, so you type in, if you type in, if you type in Uncle Dub on YouTube, you'll be able to listen to my music. Yeah. Or you can go to iTunes, Google Play, uh, Spotify, and you can even ask uh, 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 Alexa who Uncle Dub is, and Uncle Dub will come up. Oh, uh, shit, I Uncle never tried DVD. asking Alexa who I am. Maybe she knows who I am. She probably does. <laughs> she probably does. Alexa's a pretty smart bitch. <laughs> Alexa's pretty smart. You gotta pronounce shit right. <laughs> you gotta be able to pronounce it right. Dude, but, uh, that'd be Jeremy funny Garnier. as hell, man. My name's Jeremy Garnier. Catch me on my, my Facebook page at Jeremy Garnier. Uh, or catch me on Instagram at Uncle J Dub. And catch me hey. on 23 and 1 Lockdown.